<laughs> so this is an avocado. This is step one of making guacamole. Now what you want to do to start off is you want to cut the ends off because nobody likes to, nobody ever likes the ends of pretty well pretty much anything. Mm, just a little more. And you want to put that on the paper towel. Now this one is nice and uh, dark, you can see that, but it's still ripe. Now for this one all I need to do is make a little indent just like that, with my knife. And then all I need to do is pull the skin off. It comes off very easily. With a slightly more, if, if your avocados are slightly more green than this one, then what you're going to need to do is you're going to actually need to physically cut all of it. All of the skin off. That's why it's good to get more dark ones because they're a lot easier. Go ahead. So there's a brown spot here as you can clearly see and we want to remove that. So just run your knife along it and um, it should come out. Now one thing about avocados they have a huge huge uh, pit in the center and so now that you've got all the brown spots out what you're going to do is you're going to cut one, and then you're also going to make another one. You're going to cut all the way around, just like that. Now it should be in four parts. This one's not exactly in four parts, but it's close enough. Now, you, now once it's all cut up and on the cutting board, you can take your chopping tool. I have, you, you probably have one of these in your kitchen. Uh, you're just going to take a bunch of this stuff wow. and cut it and chop it till it's pretty fine. You can, you can chop, depending on your preference, you can actually chop it less or you can chop it even more than that. Most times what you'll see in restaurants is crushed avocado where it's just a, a, a like a slurry kind of thing. That's what you see a lot in Mexican restaurants. Uh, crushed avocado, not chopped. Okay. After you've chopped about four to five avocados, depending on how much you want to make, then it's time to go to tomatoes. My family generally uses beefsteak tomatoes or Roma tomatoes, and you can find them. The best ingredients that I find uh, for uh, guacamole making are from Cops in Fitchburg. Uh, but these tomatoes are quite big, as you can see, and there's already one cut here. All you do, you start by angling in with your knife, cutting in cutting the middle out, because nobody likes the middle. Alright, and you don't want to eat the skin, so all you do is, I'm going to choose this right here. Again, just like the avocado, if it's not as ripe, you have to manually cut it all, cut, off, cut all the skin off. However, this one is nice and ripe, and so I'm able to just pull it off. Now the thing to remember when cutting tomatoes, and this is extremely hard even for me, is that you don't want to go, you don't, you want to keep the cut, you, you generally want to see, keep the cut thin like this right here, and you don't want to go too far down, otherwise you expose the center and that doesn't leave as much tomato to be eaten. Alright, you're just going to keep going all the way around. 
Here's an interesting fact for you while I'm cutting this tomato. Salsa is generally made with the exact same ingredients minus the avocados and a ton more tomatoes. In fact, a lot of times when I go to um, Senior Peppers here in Oregon, I see little bits of cilantro in the, uh, in the salsa, which is mostly crushed tomatoes. And the, of course, the spiciness comes from peppers. My mom often will just take a jar of salsa, put some on it, put some on a plate, add some avocados, and have her own improvised of, um, guacamole when it's not readily available. Yeah. Um. <laughs> of course, she's taping this, so she'd say that. Yeah. So now you're just gonna you're gonna try and fit it. or thicker, depending on preference. I tend to like mine very thinly chopped like that. And another thing, you want to scoop the juice up because that keeps the guacamole, that, that makes the guacamole good. One thing that didn't make it into this uh, sh this show was um, you need to cut the bottom of the tomato off. It's a source for infection. And just one more tip when you're chopping these tomatoes. You don't want big long strands of tomatoes. So when you're chopping just like a half of a tomato, chop it and then go around the edge. Just do like one, two, move it, one, two, and just that way you don't have big long strands of tomato. So now that you've put the avocados and the tomatoes into the bowl, it's time to give it a stir. This is all about um, how it looks. You, know, you wanna make sure that you get it, you wanna go down from one side, go all the way down, you wanna hit the bottom the entire time and All the way through that way and you might also want to go around the edges to make sure that it is in fact what you think it is so now it's time for the third step this is cilantro and this is the next thing to put in uh, it's it's leafy and so what you want to do is you want to and I can't stress this enough you want to wash all your produce before you before you start chopping and cutting and all the other things that you need to do for this recipe. For cilantro especially, you really need to make sure that it's thoroughly washed. And also, you want to weed out anything that's either brown, dead, or slimy feeling because the slime could have germs could make could make it dirty and have germs on it. That looks pretty good. And you want to have about, well depending on the size of the bushel that it comes in, you might want to have one or two of these. Now, me personally, I usually like to take about half of what's on the cutting board and stuff it in there and chop it all at one time. You don't have to do that as it does take some effort, but that's just what I do. That doesn't look right.
Again, you're just going to give it a stir. Using the same technique as last time. Put more. Alright. That doesn't look like enough, so I'm going to put half of what's left, or a quarter, in. And this time I'm going to load it onto this thing. I'll have to get that. <laughs> 